one of the things that can aggravate people more than even the accuracy of their watch is when the calendar function is not working properly. The reason is, is that every time you look at the dial, you can see the problem. So in today's video, we're going to cover the calendar works, no matter whether it's a date only, a day date, or even if it has a moon phase. And by the end of the video, not only will you know how they work, but you'll know how to troubleshoot and even lubricate them properly. And we're going to get started right here. Since it would be impossible to know every single calendar system made, it's much better to understand how they work. Because if you understand how they work, then you will be able to work on any calendar system without having a technical sheet. All calendar systems, no matter whether it's a date only, a day date, something that displays the moon phases, the sunrise and sunset, they all start in the same place. And that's with the hour wheel. So what do we know about the hour wheel? Well, back in lesson four, we talked about how the motion works reduces the rotation of the center wheel to slow it down so that the hour wheel only revolves twice a day. Well, the train for the calendar works where you're displaying days and date, that train only needs to revolve once a day. We need to reduce the two rotations of the hour wheel to only one rotation every 24 hours in order to change over the day and the date. This is done very simply with a part called the intermediate date wheel. The intermediate date wheel is a very simple design. You have a tooth wheel which meshes with the hour wheel. Then on the underside, you have a pinion which gears with the next part called the driving wheel. The purpose of the driving wheel is simply to rotate the date indicator once every 24 hours. Now, the driving wheel can be set up in many different ways. It could have a fixed pin attached to it or a fixed finger. In the case of the driving wheel on the Seiko, it has a arm that rotates around that interacts with the teeth on the date indicator. But since this particular movement also has a day function, there's an additional arm that has a couple fingers on it that rotate the star on the bottom of the day display. On the ETA driving wheel, it has a spring-loaded finger. The spring-loaded finger actually serves a couple different purposes. As the driving wheel turns, the spring-loaded finger rest on the tooth of the date indicator wheel and builds up tension. Once that tension reaches a certain point, you get an instantaneous date change. The fact that it's spring loaded also is a safety feature in this movement. And that's something that we'll talk about a little later on. Date indicators could be made up of either plastic, like on the Seiko movement, or they could be made out of brass, like on the ETA movement. Date indicators have 31 teeth, one for each number that's going to be displayed. Another option for displaying dates or days or calendar phases or whatever is a disc. On the Seiko movement, it displays the day. Now, if this day disc only displayed days in one language, this star would only have seven teeth on it. But since there's two languages displayed and it makes two position changes every 24 hours, there's 14 teeth under it. These type of discs could also display the date, the month, or anything else that they want to display. If you're working on a watch that displays the date by a hand, this disc will have a pipe in the middle of it for the hand to attach to. Now, another thing that all these rings and discs have in common is they all have a jumper. And the jumper holds the position of the disc or the ring so that its position sits correctly in the display window on the dial. Now, these are all done differently. In the ETA, it has a separate jumper for the date indicator. And in the Seiko movement, the jumper is built into one of the maintaining plates. The other thing that a calendar works needs is it needs a way to hold all the parts down. In the Seiko movement, this is a combination of two plates, the one that has the built-in jumper, and then another maintaining plate 
that has a jumper for the day indicator, as well as a built-in wheel that interacts between the winding wheel on the stem in the double corrector. In the ETA movement, there are two plates that hold down the date indicator. There's another part called a double corrector. The double corrector interacts with the teeth on the date indicator, turning it one position at a time, which is held in place by the jumper. On the ETA movement, the double corrector has three fingers on the top, which interact again with the teeth on the date indicator. Now on the Seiko movement, the double corrector is activated when the stem is in the second position. And when you turn the stem in one direction, the double corrector interacts with the teeth on the date indicator, turning them one position at a time. And when you turn the stem in the other direction, the double corrector shifts over and interacts with the day changing wheel in the quick set position. So as you can see, here's two entirely different movements, one Japanese, one Swiss, but the similarities in the parts is almost identical. How they're assembled may be a little different, but they all basically work the same way. Now, starting with the Seiko 7S26, let's go ahead and assemble the parts and I'll show you how we lubricate them. Now, the first thing to understand about lubrication of Seiko movements is most of these plastic parts do not need any lubrication. I'm sure it has something to do with the friction properties between the steel and the plastic parts, but even if you look on Seiko's tech sheets, they don't call for lubrication at these points. So I like to start with the date driving wheel, then install the hour wheel. You would lubricate this normally with just a touch of HP 1300 and then install the intermediate date wheel. Then just test for the function that everything is meshed together. And then we'll lubricate the date indicator wheel. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, the way I usually do it is to start by putting a small dab of grease on my finger cot. Then I'll take one of my plastic hold down sticks and just turn it in the lubrication to spread it very lightly on the stick. Then holding the date indicator between my fingers, I just use the stick and rotate it around the teeth, depositing a very small amount of grease on the teeth. Now we can install the date indicator onto the movement. Now you can install the double corrector and the date wheel jumper. Now the date wheel jumper is just held in position with a couple steady pins. And what I have found is that if you try to put the jumper in position that it will kick out the date indicator and it just makes it really hard to assemble the other pieces. So what I'll do is I'll leave the date jumper out of position. Then I'll just lay in the date maintaining plate Put a couple screws in, don't tighten them down all the way, but just enough to hold the jumper from coming off of the steady pins. And then once two screws are in, and again, just snug, not real tight, then you can put the jumper in position in between the teeth and then go ahead and tighten those screws down and then go ahead and install the other two screws. Now with this date guard in position, now we can check the function of the quick date change. And I usually will run it through at least one time, if not twice, just to make sure it works. But the other thing that you're doing is you're spreading the lubrication that was applied with the stick earlier so that it's even on all the teeth. Now I would also point out that a second alternative method to lubricate the teeth on a date indicator wheel is to actually just apply a small bit of grease to the tooth itself. You may have to do five or six teeth, then lubricate another tooth, run it through another five or six teeth, and repeat this until you get through all 31 teeth. And then using the quick date change function, run it through a couple more times. You know, I would run it around once or twice more to spread out the lubrication. Then check on top of the jumper just to make sure that there's not any excess lubrication sitting on that 
in case you put too much. Now to install the day disc, just start by installing the intermediate wheel, which works with the quick day change function. Lay the disc in position with the language of your choice at the three o'clock position. Engage the jumper in between the star teeth, lightly holding it down with a pair of tweezers. You can check the quick date function to see if everything's meshing correctly. Leave the language of your choice again in the three o'clock position, and then you can install the C-clamp with your tweezers. Now, of course, we always want to check the system. We want to check the changeover of the date and the day to make sure everything's functioning properly. Now to assemble the ETA 2783, we're going to start with the hour wheel lubricated as normal. We'll apply a very small drop of HP 1300 to the bottom pivot of the date driving wheel and install that into position. We'll lubricate the date indicator as we did before and put it in position. And now we need to install the date jumper, which has an independent spring that holds it under tension. So before we're going to do that, we're going to take the bridge that acts as a hold down for the date indicator. And it also covers up the jumper and the jumper spring to hold it in position. And we're going to get this ready to install. So intermediate date wheel fits into this C slot on the bridge. So we're going to apply a small amount of HP 1300 to that and then install the intermediate date wheel and just have it sitting on the side ready to put in. Now we'll install the jumper in its position and then we'll install the spring. Now the difficulty with this particular spring is that you'll notice it's very high. It's a very high sitting spring and this can be a little tricky because it's very difficult to hold it down with any kind of steady pin or a piece of peg wood. So what I like to use is I have a set of these pointers, which is primarily used to push down on setting levers when we're trying to pull stems out. And I find a insert that's thinner than the spring would be when it's fully closed. And I use this pin to steady the spring in position and then just gently push it in place once it's in place then i can grab the bridge with the intermediate wheel and cover up this spring insert the screw and get it tightened down now before you tighten it down completely check to make sure that all the wheels are meshing together so you're not tightening the screw down and crushing anything and once you see the rotation of all the wheels, then you can finish tightening the screw. Once that's in position, we'll install our double corrector. With the double corrector installed, now I can install the dial indicator maintaining plate, which is held in by two screws, and that completes the assembly. Now in the second position, I can check the double corrector's function, and then I'll pull the stem out, to the hand winding position and wind it around to make sure that the date indicator is also working in that position as well. All right, now that you know how the calendar system works, troubleshooting it should be a breeze. If you have a day or date that's not sitting straight in the window of the dial, one possible problem could be that the dial feet under the dial are either bent or broken. If the day or date does not sit straight just on some of the days and not others, then you would inspect the teeth on either side of the number or day to make sure that they're not damaged because what's happening is the jumper has too much slop in the opening. If the day or date does not line up on all the numbers, then you would look for a bent jumper like on the Seiko movement. Or if you have a movement like the ETA, you would look at a problem with the spring. And then lastly, make sure all the plates are tightened down properly because a loose plate that has a jumper built into it, like on the Seiko watch, or a plate that's holding down a jumper and a spring, 
if that is loose, that will cause faults in the date window as well. If your quick date function is not working, but the date changes normally in the regular running of the movement, then you would look to the double corrector as the problem. If the quick date change for the day is not working properly, then you would just look at that intermediate wheel and possibly any damage on the star underneath the day disk. If the day and date is not changing over in a normal course of the watch running, then you would look at the gear train leading from the hour wheel to the driving wheel. One common problem people have is when the date doesn't turn over exactly at midnight. That's really just a matter of taking the hands off and resetting them. So at the time that the date changes, the hands are exactly at 12 midnight. I am going to be doing a hand setting video, which will be coming up soon. So make sure you stick around for that. And then the other issue that seems to confuse people is when the calendar system's working fine before the dial is put on, but after the dial goes on, it doesn't work right. Well, normally that's going to be because there's a spacer that separates the space between the driving wheel and the day disc and the underside of the dial. If the dial's pushed down directly on top of the disc, it's not going to turn right. So more than likely, you just forgot to put on the movement ring that separates the two pieces. There seems to be a little confusion about changing the time between the hours of 9 p.m. and 3 in the morning. So I want to give you just a little bit of clarity about what the issue really is. I would start by first saying whatever the manufacturer recommends on that particular movement about not doing day changes between certain hours, you should always follow that. But the reason that it can be a problem on certain movements has to do with the way that the finger or pin on the driving wheel actually works. What happens is when a driving wheel is coming around, the pin or the finger is in between two of the teeth on the date indicator for a total period of between four to six hours. If the finger on the driving wheel is fixed and it's in between these two teeth and you try to use the quick date function to turn the date over, the dial indicator tries to turn and it hits the resistance of that fixed finger that's sitting in between the two teeth. And what happens is people feel a little bit of resistance and they just force it to turn over and that can cause damage to all kinds of parts in the calendar system. Knowing that a lot of manufacturers now design their driving wheels to have a safety function. As you can see on the Seiko movement, if the driving finger for the date indicator is in between the teeth and you use the quick date function, the teeth on the driving wheel just push it out of the way because this driving finger has the ability to be pushed down. On the driving wheel on this ETA movement, since the finger on this driving wheel is spring-loaded, if you're using the quick date function, the tooth as it comes around just pushes the spring out of the way. So these safety systems are made so that no damage occurs. Now, would you want to do this all the time? Probably not a good idea, but there's no need to panic if it happens because these safety systems are there really for just the occasional time that you might do that. So the best advice is follow the manufacturer specs, but in, when you're working on a movement, look to the driving wheel to see if there is a safety feature and then you really don't need to worry about it. Well guys, that's going to wrap up another one. If you have anything you'd like to add to the conversation, please drop it in the comments. And as always, because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.